Welcome everybody to tonight's uh, Grace Harbor North of Falcon meeting. We'll uh, just go ahead and give it a few more minutes till uh, we sort of see participants uh, level off here. Uh, so please stand by for just a few moments. I'm still seeing a small uptick in participants, so I think I'll just give it about two more minutes and then we'll get started. Thank you. Okay, well, it looks like uh, uh, we've probably hit critical mass here, so I'll just go ahead and get started. My name is Marlene Wagner, and I am the uh, new Willapa Bay and Grace Harbor Fisheries Policy Lead. Uh, I'm going to start out this meeting tonight, and I'll, I'll do that by just uh, going over some of the Zoom logistics and ground rules. So thank you for joining us. Um, you can turn your camera on and mute or unmute yourself through the control panel at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we'll keep folks muted during the beginning of our program and then we'll be unmuting folks when we open it up for questions and feedback. Callers can unmute themselves by pressing star six on your cell phones uh, or regular phone. Uh, we ask that you uh, raise your hand to ask a question, which you can access this through the control panel at the bottom of the screen. 
You can also raise your hand by hovering over your face or name on the list of participants. Callers can raise their hand by dialing uh, star nine. Um, please be respectful of others, mute your phone or line, be tough on the issues and questions, but not on other people or organizations. Um, please no personal attacks, insults or threats. Uh, make sure you're listening and speak and act professionally and allow for a balance of speaking time. So try to limit your length to allow others to participate. Um, we are recording the meeting. And if you have any technical issues during the call, you can use the chat button and we'll help you through those. But please don't use the chat for questions or comments on the presentation because uh, we're gonna take those live and allow you the opportunity to speak. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so um, again, welcome everybody. Uh, we're here tonight as part of our 2021 North Falcon process and our focus of this evening's meeting is Grace Harbor. Uh, we have handouts for tonight's meeting posted on our website currently. Um, so if you'd like, you can refer to those. Uh, we'll probably be referencing some of those materials as we continue through our discussion tonight. Um, and here we just have a presentation overview and our meeting agenda. Um, we're gonna start with introducing the staff and people on the line. We'll review a little bit about the North Falcon process revisit salmon forecasts that we went over in late February so that we're all up to speed. And then we will talk about our 2021 management objectives for the upcoming season in Grace Harbor. So our purpose tonight as part of the North of Falcon process is to present information about the forecasted returns and what that might mean for our fisheries this year to allow you to ask questions. And our primary purpose is to hear your thoughts and ideas about the fisheries this year and discuss anything what we might want to contemplate as we're crafting potential seasons and thinking about you know, different scenarios. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I'd like to uh, introduce the staff. Most of these folks are on the line with us. Um, I, again, I'm Marlene Wagner. I'm the Willapa Bay Grace Harbor Fisheries Policy Lead. And I work under uh, Mark Baltzell, the statewide salmon and steelhead manager, and Kyle Addix, our intergovernmental salmon manager. Our regional director in Region 6 is Larry Phillips. James Losey is our regional fish program manager. Um, Rob Allen oversees the hatcheries. And Mike Sharp is our district biologist here for the Grace Harbor District. And Kim Figler and Kurt Holt are biologists that work alongside Mike. Next slide, please. Um, so in Washington, we have a number of different considerations and management constraints as we craft the fisheries each year. And of course, because salmon do swim across international borders, um, planning happens at a lot of different scales and jurisdictional levels. Um, so the Pacific Salmon Commission or PSC is a treaty-based international organization that serves as the entity for decision-making for for cooperative management of Pacific salmon. And the Pacific Salmon Treaty sets limits on catches and interceptions of salmon from Southeast Alaska uh, all the way to the Southern US. And it covers the outside ocean area out in international waters. And so as quotas are set for those fisheries each year, these catches have to be factored in because they affect the number of fish returning here to Washington. Inside of that, we have the Pacific Fisheries Management Council or PFMC. Uh, who are responsible for fisheries in the economic exclusion zone, which is three miles to 200 miles offshore. And then on the inside waters, we have tribes, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, and us, the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. And fisheries in inside waters are planned through uh, this North of Falcon process. Next slide, please. So this slide provides just a, a uh, another brief overview of the North of Falcon process. Um, we start with forecasting the abundance of each stock. And from there, we can determine if, if there is a harvestable surplus. And once we have determined if and what that harvestable surplus is, we can model fisheries to determine which stocks um, are gonna be constraining stocks. We predict what we'll catch under different fishing scenarios. And then we negotiate with our tribal co-managers and other states for sharing the catching of those stocks. And 
currently, uh, right now, we are on steps three and four. Um, so both these steps are sort of an iterative process between modeling fisheries and predicting what we'll catch. Next slide, please. Um, so this slide is actually already history as we're now at March 24th. Um, but the last time we met, we had our joint Willow Bay and Grace Harbor forecast meeting. And the links to all these meetings and, and materials from the meetings are found here and are clickable in the meeting presentation for tonight um, that you see on our website. Next slide, please. Um, so again, uh, we're here tonight to go over the fisheries and, and to open a, a discussion about our fisheries in Grace Harbor. Um, on the 31st, we'll have a second North of Falcon meeting where we'll meet again with our co-managers on the inside and start to refine fishery planning models a little bit more. And we'll meet with you again on April 6th to attempt to hammer down um, the preferred fishery options for 2021 before the final PFMC meeting. Um, again, all these materials and, and the meeting schedule in entirety and links can be found um, uh, at the link at the bottom of the, of the page. Next slide, please. So the rulemaking process for the department is called the APA or the Administrative Procedure Act process. Um, we start by filing a CR 101 that is kind of a public notice saying we're gonna open up these rules for consideration for changes this year. After a minimum of 45 days in the rules, we publish a CR 102. And what that essentially said is this is our preferred changes for rules. And we take a written comments and have public hearings to consider any modifications uh, to those rules or if, if we identify any errors. Um, the CR 103 contains a concise explanatory statement about the changes that were made within those rules. And then after the director signs those, they are published in an effective 31 days after filing. Next slide, please. Uh, so this process that we're going through right here uh, for the last several weeks and tonight, the North of Falcon process is what happens between the 101 and the 102. And this is when we have this extensive process where we're sharing information and, and importantly, collecting public input as part of that rulemaking process. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so the Pacific Fishery Management Council or PFMC at its meetings that wrapped up a couple of weeks ago, uh, they set ocean alternatives for this year um, and they're laid out here for both Chinook and Coho. Uh, I'm not gonna read through every number, but I will point out that there's a zero or closed option for uh, both Chinook and Coho. And so this zero option is being considered as we have uh, poor forecasted coastal coastal stocks this year. And so of course there's conservation concern for these fish and the state and treaty tribes wanted to preserve all of our options and have them all available to us as we continue through the preseason process. Next slide, please. Uh, so here is just a, a figure of the ocean quotas going back to 2003. Um, the black lines represent non-treaty quotas and the gray dots and gray lines represent treaty quotas with Chinook on the left and Coho on the right, um, number of fish. Uh, so the take home here is that state and tribal fisheries take fish in the ocean and we do need to account for those when determining terminal run fisheries. So with that, I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Mike Sharp to provide some Grace Harbor specific information for you. Thank you. Good evening. Hi, I'm Mike Scharf. I'm the district biologist uh, for Grace Harbor, Queets, and Quinault Basins. I'll be talking to you about uh, recent stock trends, uh, review the forecasts, and review a planning model that represents last year's seasons with this year's forecasts. Uh, we're going to be presenting several graphs on the next few slides, so I want to go through them just so that we understand what they're presenting. Um, the graphs represent the natural spawning escapement in the black line, the run size on the gray line. Uh, hopefully you guys can see the color difference there. And then the green line represents the uh, conservation goal for each of the stocks. And the blue dot is the forecasted abundance. The um, 
axis that runs up and down, that represents the number of fish, while the left to right axis represents the timeline. So uh, for spring Chinook, you can see that there have been a steady decline in abundance uh, through 2018. Uh, thankfully, we've seen kind of a nice rebound the last two years. Uh, we've seen a similar rebound for uh, fall Chinook. Um, we've seen uh, the escapement goal being met three uh, the last three years in a row. So that's a nice bonus. However, um, should, uh, coho stocks uh, haven't rebounded very well since the 2015 big decline. Uh, this is very representative of other stocks across the state. So this is not a regional um, isolated issue. Uh, coho stocks just aren't doing very well, particularly along the coast. Next slide. Um, I'm gonna review the, the forecast really quick. Um, Spring Chinook is forecasted to return at 1,082. Uh, fall Chinook, the natural population is 10,852, while we have a hatchery uh, forecast of 1,862. Now that the coho forecasts, I wanna again reiterate that this is an ocean aged abundance. So uh, this, um, number is not how many fish will cross the bar. It's, it's the number of fish out in the ocean before fisheries begin. We won't know what the number is that will cross the bar until after ocean fisheries have been finalized. So those numbers, these numbers will be a little bit smaller once we get those numbers in. But for Chehalis Natural Coho, the forecast is 42,324 with a hatchery forecast of 23,000. 801. Next slide, please. How are the hump tulip stocks doing? Um, fall Chinook have been fairly steady over the years. We've achieved the escapement goal um, every year since 2014. Uh, last two years, we've population, uh, the spawning escapement has dropped a little bit, but we still have managed to be above the goal. While coho, um, again, since 2015 and prior to that, um, have returned in far below the goals uh, number. And we have our Grace Harbor chum abundance in, in this slide also. Um, and again, a steady uh, population that has been above the goal for many uh, of the last 10 years or so. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's all I need to say about those guys. So next slide, please. Uh, forecasts for uh, hump tulips for fall Chinook, the naturals is 4,668 with a hatchery forecast of 5,696. And again, coho numbers are ocean abundance. Uh, for natural coho, for the hump tulips, it's 25, uh, 2,519 and a hatchery forecast of 7,874. The forecast for Grace Harbor Chum is 40,138 for the wild stock and 2,110 for the hatchery stock. Next slide, please. Um, I'm going to present just the coho forecasts for Queets and, and Quinault as they might have some impacts, uh, particularly to the ocean. Um, quickly, the uh, Quinault coho, and, and these are natural populations. Um, uh, Quine, Quinault coho have, uh, as a, a population has been steady over the years. Um, there isn't a, an escapement goal for that particular population. It is managed to meet hatchery um, production goals. Whereas Queets, again, since 2015, it's been uh, difficult for that population to rebound above its goal of 20 or 5,800. Uh, and you'll see, uh, particularly the last couple of years, that population has been really low. Um, next slide. 
Again, forecast abundance for coho, these are ocean abundances and not terminal returns, but they re reflect the recent trends of each of their populations. Um, the Quinault River has a natural coho forecast of 15,005 fish with a hatchery forecast of 24,645. And the Queets natural uh, Pop, uh, forecast is 3,919 with a hatchery forecast of 11,780. Next slide. All right. So we, we've kind of run through what the forecasts are. Um, and, and that gives us an idea of uh, where we need to do go and, and, and what our management objectives are. So um, I'm gonna run through this slide real quick and then I think we'll, we'll go to a break. No, actually we'll have questions um, on the presentation so far uh, at this point and then we'll, we'll take a quick break. But um, the management objectives as I see them for this year, uh, we have a forecast for Spring Chinook that is below goal. We have a history of uh, a recent history of pretty low returns, so um, probably going to recommend that we don't have a directed fishery on spring chinook during 2021. Uh, hump tulips coho is again below the forecast. Um, we will manage uh, based on our, the policy to <clears throat> minimize impacts to five percent or less, and with um, Shahamas Coho this year. Um, that population has missed the goal in 2015, 17, and 19. And based on the red accounting that we have so far this year, and comparing that, those numbers to uh, average numbers in the past, it is not likely that we'll come anywhere close to the goal for the 2020 season. And with that, I would recommend that we're going to manage the Chehalis um, coho to 5% or less because it has not achieved its uh, escapement goal consistently over the last several years. All other stocks, uh, hump tulips, chinook, Shayla Chinook and Grace Harbor Chum, we will be managing those to meet the escapement goals. So next slide. Okay, at this point, um, we would like to ask every, anybody if they have questions about the presentation that has been presented so far. We're gonna get into fishery related questions at, later on, but we wanted to make sure everybody is up to speed on what has been presented at this point. And then we'll uh, take a quick break, uh, some you know, potty break and, and getting water. So uh, open it up for any questions. Wow. Crickets? Yeah, I'm not seeing any, Mike. We're not that good, folks. Got to be questions. Well, how about we take a 10 minute break? Oh, we have Dave oh, Hamilton wait. with a question. Dave, I have allowed you to talk. Unmute. How, how about now? Am I unmuted? Oh, boy. Yes, we can hear you, Dave. Oh, great. That works much better. Uh, I don't have much here as part because I actually uh, looked at what you sent out. It's down there on your the, uh, the spreadsheet that you're going to come up with. Uh, that said 2020, whatever, the returns. And it kind of don't match what you just said. So, but there's nobody who's asked the question. I figured I'd break the silence, but that's where I'll be hanging out in a few minutes when you come around again. Did you get that? Yeah, I'll, I'll we'll go into a little bit more detail in a little bit. 
Okay, that's what I meant. Yep, 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 yep. But figure somebody should say something so you quit looking around with the deer in the headlight looks. And that looks to be it, Mike. Uh, do we need to take a break? I think maybe a quick five minute break for anybody that might want something. Mike, let's go ahead and take a break until 630 and then we can start uh, going over the planning models. Sounds good. Ah, so we'll meet everybody back at 6.30. Thank you.
I guess. Well, it's after 6.30, do I? Uh, it's still me running the show evidently. So uh, let's continue. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? I'm hoping everybody is back. So the next few slides uh, I'm going to present. Uh, I ran a model uh, with last year's fishing season uh, with this year's forecasts to, to see how the management objectives for 2020 meet um, what we have forecasted to come back. Uh, so I'm going to go through Chehalis real quick, then hump tulips, and then present the uh, uh, Grace Harbor as a whole. So these and, and the Quinault numbers have also been updated. Uh, we didn't get numbers from them, but I um, just used the model uh, that they have had, uh, updated it with numbers. And so these represent their season last year as it pertains to this year's forecasts. So on the Shehala side, um, there are a couple of objectives. Uh, for Shayless Natural Chinook, our goal is to meet the uh, escapement objective of 97.3 of uh, 9,753. And you'll see the red at the 9,498. So last year's season will not meet the objective of achieving the, the escapement goal for natural Chinook in the Shehalis. Uh, one of the other big management objectives is the 5% or less for Chehalis natural coho. And you'll see last year's season um, for WDFW managed fisheries was at 10.22%. So last year's season, uh, there's gonna be a, a, some crafting that needs to go on to shave some percentage points off of that stock. Um, one of the other management objectives that we always look at is uh, commercial impacts in area 2A, 2D during non-treaty commercial fisheries to manage those to 8.8% or less. And last year's season puts us at 0.16%. So quite a bit uh, below the management objective there. So no issues on that front. Uh, next slide, please. On the hump tulip side, um, management objectives for natural Chinook are to achieve the conservation objective. Uh, on the coho side, it is 5% uh, or less due to the low forecasted abundance. Uh, you'll see that the red 1865, um, you know, it, that would be red even if we didn't fish. So the management objectives for natural coho are WDFW managed fisheries to have less than or equal to 5% impacts. And uh, last year's season in the hump tulips and in the North Bay uh, are at 2.43%. So well below the goal. Um, and the management objective for the commercial fishery impacts on Chinook um, and I uh, may get into that a little bit later on. We may not. Uh, it's at 1.2% based on the forecasted abundance. Um, we didn't have a fishery at 2C for commercial last year. So uh, that season. So what this tells me is that the season we had last year in the hump tulips basin will still meet the objectives based on this year's forecasted abundance. Uh, next slide. So Grace Harbor as a whole, um, natural uh, Chinook, the uh, objective is to meet the, the escapement goal. Um, and under last year's season as an aggregate, we do achieve that goal, uh, but natural coho does not. So last year's season puts us at uh, 33,500 with a goal of 35,400. And we also need to remember that 5% um, or less is what our management objectives are for stocks that don't routinely meet the conservation objectives. And last year we were in, last year's season, this year's abundance is at 9.78% impact. 
Uh, you'll see one other color red. It's the 4.10% for CHUM. Uh, I, I wanted to remove that. That is simply in the sharing of uh, sport impacts. Um, the policy states that no more than 2% of the CHUM impacts uh, can occur out in the marine areas under last year's season. Um, 4.1% of the chum impacts occur out in, in the bay. Uh, those uh, targets, the splits between the freshwater and the uh, marine sport fisheries are sometimes pretty difficult to uh, chor uh, choreograph. Uh, adjusting fisheries to meet one of them tends to offset uh, one of the other species. So um, with that, um, the summary that I see based on last year's season to this year's forecasted abundance and management objectives is that we need to make some moves on uh, reducing our impacts on coho. Uh, with that, um, next slide. Uh, I re again, um, okay, sorry. Uh, we have received uh, several fishery suggestions so far this year um, via emails, phone calls, and whatnot. Uh, so we've categorized, well, we, we've listed some of those. And um, uh, so they're listed here. Um, and there's actually two that relate to, to this first one where uh, when fishery conservation restricts fishery fishing, um, and there's a chance that we have to cut a couple of weeks out. Try to look at using a couple of days per week as opposed to two solid weeks uh, to see if you can extend seasons instead of just you know a block two week break. Can you achieve the, the same objective by maybe fishing only five days a week? So we have that. Um, uh, another fishery suggestion was that uh, we should retain all hatchery, Chinook, and coho. Focus on hatchery, coho, and chum. Reserve wild coho and Chinook. Conserve those by uh, mark selective type fisheries. Um, spring shook conservation. There's a question, will the entire river be shut down? Will there be other restrictions for a more targeted approach? No need to close the entire river. Um, and the upper basin recreational fishery should bear most of the conservation. So this stems from a concern from a couple of years ago when, when we had an extremely low return of spring Chinook, which uh, I think the escapement was below 500. So it, during that year, we closed all fisheries in areas where spring Chinook may be encountered. Uh, we don't think at this point in time that that's going to be necessary, uh, but uh, there is concern as we move forward. Uh, increase jack, uh, code jack limits in the Chehalis River to 12 per day and extend the code jack season into September 30th. Uh, we also have a proposal to mark select fisheries for coho from September 15th through November 30th. And next slide, I think there are a few more suggestions that came in. Um, again, reduce coho impacts by trying to do weekly uh, days of closure as opposed to total weeks at a time. Um, so we've got a couple of those recommendations. And then if, if we are in the coho, um, as it says here, three, five box with coho recreational fishery with one adult limit September 15th through November 30th with possible shortening seasons by one or two days per week. And then another recommendation, no Chinook retention. And then we did get one commercial uh, schedule recommendation uh, for area 2A and 2D um, beginning in week 41 have one day with tangle net, week 42, one day with tangle net, and then weeks 43 and 44 have a three day fisheries. 
at this point, that is all the recommendations that we have received so far this year. Um, but this meeting is um, part of its objective is to hear from you guys. So I think next slide. Um, we open it up from this point on for fishery suggestions and conversation and questions. Mike, it looks like we have a question from Dave Hamilton. Dave, I have allowed you to talk and requested that you unmute. There we go, unmuted, got it, I think. Perfectly. Um, thank you. Um, uh, uh, I'm one of the people, probably the first one, I've been kind of yipping about it, is lose days instead of like a two week shutdown. Um, no matter what you do, if you do a shutdown, the fish are going to put it to you. It's the nature of the beast, if not that mother nature. So like last year, it rained early. Well, the bay and the tidewater, we didn't do so hot. East County loved it a couple of years ago, the other way around. And so if you do a shutdown, it's just a question of who's going to bear the full brunt of it versus everybody full, full length. So uh, to me, is tell me if I'm wrong, Mike, at the 5%, we're going to be somewhere around 2,000 coal natural impacts, right? Oh, you put me on the spot. Give me a second. Um, let me open up. Uh, I think it's a little more than that. Okay. Well, but I, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's off. pretty low. Okay. So let's, let's put it this way. If you look at what we got last year with the two weeks down, uh, that really is not going to fit too well. You know what I mean? There's just, there's not that many fish. Okay. So my thought is pretty simple, is we, we, we catch and release, period, all wild coho and Chinook, uh, period. And then that isn't going to make it all the way. But if we lose Monday and Tuesday, that is, is 30, a third of it. But because less people fish Monday and Tuesday than Saturday and Sunday, but it should give you the pad you need to fit in and if you don't take another day it's whatever's needed so people can fish and enjoy what they do through the summer instead of just being locked in and it, it, it it's not equitable so and they just put it out in the columbia they're going to fish sturgeon i think you have to correct me it's like monday wednesday and friday they do it on the ocean there's simply no reason because of the circumstances we're in that we don't adjust our approach that we've had for many, many years because this thing with low returns is not gonna go away. And we certainly do not wanna blow escapement again because then it gets harder to get out when you have an upturn there, you'll be setting with a run up and not being able to get out and harvest. So my thought is to go after the hatchery fish, they're gonna be a bonus. You're gonna catch and release a lot of wild, use our impacts for uh, the release of wild coho, and then you trim a couple days off Monday and Tuesday. Uh, and because the tribe always goes in Sunday at noon, that, and it don't affect much of us there because we fish the morning, afternoon, the way it lays out. So we could fish five days and work around the nation and everything else and, and reduce our impacts. And it just simply makes more sense to just bite the bullet and make sure we make escapement and, and do it in a way that's fair to everybody, whether you live in Oakville or you fish to bay. And that's just my thought, simply straight up. Appreciate that, Dave. Uh, oh, and one thing, guys, you might want to tell people again about the raise hand feature down. I've already had two phone calls wanting to know how you get to you guys, so tell them I'm not sure if the raise hand shows up for the folks that aren't on the advisors or whatever, but you might do that so they know it'll pop up and down off your cursor because some of the people didn't catch it. And if somebody can help me out there, I don't know what the procedures are for raised hands for participants. Yeah, 
Thanks, Dave, and thanks, Mike. Um, so if you're on a phone, uh, you can unmute yourself by pressing star six. And we're gonna ask you to unmute yourself. So you'll need to kind of wait for Leah's prompt for that, I believe. But you can raise your hand on your phone by dialing star nine. And uh, if you're on your computer screen in the Zoom webinar on the bottom, you should sort of see a, a strip of little pictures. And, and one is, at least on my screen, says participants. Uh, chat and raise hand. So if you hover your cursor over the raise hand that and press on it, that that should do it. And others and might others might show as reactions. And if they click on reaction, it'll give them the opportunity to raise their hand. Thank you, Leah. Um, I hope that helps. Um, we could maybe pop it to the first slide for a moment too, if if that might help. Not sure, but anyway. Uh, uh, raise your hand by star nine and unmute yourself with star six. Do we have any other questions? I, I see Dave's hand up again. It is, I thought I lowered it, I'm sorry. Anyway, one thing about, uh, I didn't think, Chinook period, uh, that, that wild number of 550, uh, uh, I can't remember, it's 200 and some with just going off memory without popping it up here, but on the release mortalities, uh, even though we're out of three five and we have harvestable Chinook, we'll eat 550 impacts for breakfast before noon shows up. Okay, uh, and boy, would that really put the screws to the bay fishery? I mean, that's who would take the biggest hit there, and that's just not right. Um, and so Chinook, uh, we just need to release the bloody creature and and, and let it go about its way and and use our use our hooking mortalities. Uh, rather than, than keep them. And number two is, uh, if you can retain like a Mark Chinook, well, all you have to do is half a Puget Sound read that, and the horde coming down the freeway would make Genghis Khan blush, okay? It, 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 so there's too many people of us, and you're gonna have enough trouble trying to model coho and everything, because your model's not right. I can tell you straight up, each year, every time, that another river is reduced or something else. You get more people, more guides, and we are getting packed elbow to elbow and you can't model it. So right now you're modeling and then you're, you're damn near have to do it by your gut. And that's not a good way. And that's why I'm advocating release all wilds, release all Chinook, and we lose a couple of days to give you the insurance you need that we don't miss escapement because I don't think you can model a wreck and, it, and, and I think Doc has said it best, you've got no idea if you can go after shit up just how many the wreck can mow down. They can mow more down and you can dream of. So I think it's, we just need to be conservative on both, on all of them and give you some room in there to protect the fish without and, and maintain some semblance of reasonable fisheries, okay? But Chinook, We'll eat them for breakfast. I mean, you the bay wouldn't be on the, the water for, for a week before they ate theirs all up. It'd just be done in record time, and that's not right. Thank you. And I'm all done. Shut up for a while. Thank you, Dave. Uh I see another hand up. I see Bill Osborne. Bill, I requested you to unmute. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Yes, my name is Bill Osborne, long time fisherman in Grace Harbor, uh, dedicated Jack fisherman. Uh, I saw the comment in there about the 12. Uh, I don't know if that was from somebody else 
or if that was part of the email that I sent to Mike and all the WDF people and all the uh, people that I know at that Fish Jacks in Grays Harbor County. The thing I didn't like on the on the uh, the presentation that was up there, it said September 30th. That wasn't me. Uh, I fished Jackson and Chehalis for 45 years, and I would never uh, uh, cut Jack's season off at September 30th. Probably uh, minimum third week in October, but all of that again is on Mother Nature. If it rains a lot. I'll guarantee any jacks that are around are long gone. And, and uh, there's three or four places from South Monty to Satsop where bank anglers have access. And, and there's as many as 25 to 30 people that fish when the water's right. And sometimes you get two tides where you can fish and, and the, the, limit of six i can't even find anything in history about when that got started and i've talked to some people that are older than me and i'm 80 and they don't remember when the jack limit was six and and if i gave you the numbers of fish which dave hamilton says i shouldn't do uh, that make it to the hatchery uh, uh that aren't used for spawning and they're they're eliminated you know what i mean by that uh the number i have uh over a 10-year period is 19,559 between the skookum truck and the two sats up hatcheries that's a lot of fish that sportsmen have access to and and we don't not everyone's going to even catch a a, a a jack at all but some people uh, uh, would like to have jacks that they can't fish adults. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. You got your recommendation written down. Thank you. Do we have any other questions this evening? Oh, I see uh, Bill has his hand up again. Okay. Uh, can you hear me again? Yes, sir. Uh, I have a comment on uh, relative to Dave Ham Hamilton's comment on days off. Please don't uh, allow the, the working guys to be able to fish Saturday and Sunday. Uh, I, I, I've watched over the years what happens out at Westport. They shut Sunday off to the working guy and and I think that's a rip off. So if we're going to go to to a couple of days a week off. Don't have one of them Sunday, because that again, that's that's a working guy's chance to, to come out and go fishing. I don't care. I fish seven days a week anyhow. Okay, I just worried about the guy that has to work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Would anybody else like to offer a question or a suggestion? I'm not seeing any more hands up, so um, that might be a wrap for this evening. Uh, we really appreciate everybody in attendance and for participating. Um, and we will have our, oh, I see another hand up, uh, Dave Hamilton. Unmute. I've learned to unmute myself now. Amazing. Um, I, Mike, I have a question for you. What, not to put you on the spot, <laughs> but what what do you think you're you're going to be able to craft here? I don't mean get it right down to the nitty gritty. That's not here. But 
give us a general idea of what you think the stru what, what structure you can put together. Uh, see, that's part of what's going on. If you ask people for questions, okay, they can ask you about the numbers you put up. Okay, that's fairly easy. But how do they ask you, what are you going to do with the numbers? And so the thing that I'm saying here is, uh, I, I, my computer's talking to me. Um, the, what, are, what exactly do you think is possible to craft? I mean, a, a gen, just ballpark, general, general flavor, what you think right now. Well, well uh, thanks, thanks, Dave. Um, uh, certainly, we're here for this meeting to see what you guys, the, the constituents, feel is important with some of the limitations that we are given this year. Um, and uh, we're going to use your suggestions and, and explore options. Um, there, there are a variety of them. Uh, Mark Selective is certainly on the table. Um, and different types of season um, reduction. Um, I, I'm not thinking we'll mess with the bag limit from last year. It's it's hard to go down from one. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, certainly we were hoping that, um, and we've got some expression of, of desire from uh, the constituents. Uh, we're hoping for a little bit more tonight, um, knowing that we have some limitations. Um, but as we move forward um, and we get more information from ocean fisheries and uh, from our, our tribal co-managers, uh, that'll help us craft things. So sorry, sorry I can't give you anything uh, um, solid at this point in time, but um, you know, we're looking at pretty much every option we can. Okay. Well, I have a question on your data. On the, you, you sent one model out that says 2020 season results, Chehalis, Hump Tolops, and Grace Harbor. Okay. And that says we made escapement last year. Um, where, where, I, I, what did I send out? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's three spreadsheets deep. If I scroll, just three pages. Oh, the headline audit is 2020 season results, Chehalis, Hub Tulips, and Grace Harbor. So is it one of the handouts? Yeah. So it was it was the model that had last year's seasons with forecasted abundance. Uh, this year's forecasted abundance. So it didn't, it, it wasn't uh, our escapement. It's it's taking last year's season and putting it against this year's forecasted abundance and what would the result of the escapement be. So I think it was on like slide 20, 21. If you run to slide 21, Dave, let me know if this is the one you're talking about. Oh, I happen to have it minimized and I just pop it up and read it while you're talking. Hey, um, Leah, can you run to slide 21, I believe? Is this what you're looking at? Nope. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not sure what you're looking at, but the 2020. Well, it, what I'm, all I can tell you is it, it came out with the presentation. I'd have to, oh, hopefully I won't lose you. I'm going to jump to my email. Uh, uh, so so our escapement that. estimate for 2020 for the Chehalis Basin was 26,000. 900 and something like that. Uh, well, that, now see, this one's showing, and the numbers between the harvest model this year and this one are different. So, and it, it's titled 2020 season results. So anyway, you might want to look at that because uh, it's showing expected escapement for 2020, for 2020 at 31079 which is in the green. So that my, that was some sort of model run that was showing- In other words, it snuck in there and it probably shouldn't have. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's not showing an, a, an escapement that's a, a, an expected escapement based on fishery modeling. So okay. the 2020 
but we don't have a 2020 escapement estimate at this time. Okay. Dave, so I wonder if this is, pardon me. I wonder sure. if this is something that we could follow up with you uh, on the phone uh, tomorrow after the meeting. Yeah, it's, it's perfectly fine. I, 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 I got no problem with any of it. I just kind of, uh, when you sent the information out, I immediately look at all of it. And then I seen one title, when I looked at the title on it, I scratched my head uh, because <laughs> the, the, the title simply says, it's a standard spreadsheet, just like it was. So it's like, says 2020 season results, Chehalis, Hump Tool to Grace Harbor. And so I, I guess I, it confused me a bit. So I'm sure you, it'll, it'll get around. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll be in all day tomorrow. Um, certainly can. Um, You'll see it if you click on it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not even sure what you're clicking on. So I'm not sure where that came from. So I can't help you. So I, I'll follow up it, with you tomorrow. Yeah, it's like uh, on my computer because I got a wide screen. It's top row of attachments, far right. And I can't remember the title. If I jump into my email to give you the title, I'm just, I got Zoom up here. And I, well, I can kill Zoom. Nah, I better not. <laughs> so, Long and short of it is there, there, take a look, you'll see. So I, I can talk a little bit about the 2020 Coho escapement estimate. And, and I kind of did some looking into it just in case this question came up and I'll try to keep this quick and short in that uh, when, when we're doing our escapement estimates for Coho in the Chehalis Basin, we have 90 index reaches covering 50 different streams that cover over almost 70 miles of habitat on a weekly basis. And if we look at the number of reds counted in some of those major indexes that we do and compare those to historical counts, the 2020 numbers are about 30 to 40% of the average. And with that information, it's telling me that we're nowhere going to be close to the escapement goal in 2020. Um, and I'll also say that in our uh, supplemental surveys, we cover almost 350 miles uh, of habitat. So uh, I am pretty comfortable in saying that the 2020 goal will not be achieved in the Chehalis Basin for Coho this year or in 2020. So uh, are there more questions or comments out there? Okay, hey Dave, just so everybody's clear, what you're looking at is the modeled performance from last year. So when we went through the, the, uh, the same process last year, we presented the same looking table as we did today. We expected to have 31,090 or 79 fish escape the fisheries and hit the gravel. That didn't happen. Um, the number of fish coming back didn't match what the forecast was. So okay. that, that's what you're looking at. Yeah, like I said, if, if, you're, if you look at the title, then look at the, this year's harvest model and look at that, you start scratching your head. So I didn't know what exactly was in there. You with me? It's pretty, you know. Yeah, I, I, this seems like a relic from last year, but okay. Uh, and certainly if you have more questions, I, I'll be available. Uh, everybody has my phone number. Uh, send me an email. Um, there's got to be more questions out there. Uh, uh, there is one thing. <laughs> Bill brought it up um, about, it, like, I, 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 I can't stress enough how much I believe like a last year we had a two week shutdown and we're in deep, we got to go lower than that. So what are we going to do? Shut down everything for a month. I mean, and so you fish two weeks and you're out of there. I mean, it, that it, it, so this thing where we catch and release wild is a no brainer uh, is, and then what Bill said about the weekend is true. 
and, and everything we have to endure, and this is not going away, whether you're Oakville or you're the Bay, it's not going away, not anytime soon. And appreciate so, your comments, Dave. Huh? I appreciate those comments. Well, I just simply, Bill's I, saying about Saturday, Sunday, he's right. The working guy with the kids and everything else, he has to fish the weekend, okay? And he's got limited time to do it. And when you have a shutdown, he's going to get to fish one day, two days with his family. That ain't good. So, you know, do it days of the week if we have to lose. But, you know, you keep Saturday and Sunday. But if we have to lose three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, let's lose Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Whatever it takes to get us to where we need to be and yet allow everybody, working man and retiree, guy with little money and kids, guy with a lot of money, we're all in the same boat and we share the pain. This, that way, no one group or entity has to take the bite the ball. I mean, it's just, it seems to me the only equitable way to do it. Got it. Thanks. Not the heart. Thank you for that, Dave. I, I'm not seeing any other questions here. And so I think we'll wrap up with that. We're just so pleased uh, that you could all join us this evening. And uh, so our next, our second North of Falcon meeting is on the 31st. And then we'll join you back here again for all things Grace Harbor on April 6th. And please do be in touch in the meantime. And uh, thank you again so much, everybody. Have a wonderful evening.